Welcome to Friends and Neighbors. I am your host today, Sandra O'Neill. My fabulous, wonderful co-host friend of mine is not here today, but she will be here in the next episodes. But I have a wonderful guest that's back with us by the name of Chris Wark. Help me welcome, welcome uh, to the Friends and Neighbors set. I'm so excited to have you back. Thank you, Sandra. It's really good to be back. Well, Atlanta. the last time you were here, we were talking about how Chris beat cancer, yep. your book that hit like all of the number one categories out there, wherever books are sold, right? Yeah, it was a national bestseller. That yeah, is yeah. amazing. Well, and I love your story of perseverance and faith and how in the midst of trial, in the midst of just devastation, when you are diagnosed with cancer, what do you do? And your book really highlights that, but we're going to dive into that. But God has also expanded your territory because now you have written a book called Beat Cancer Daily. It's a devotional book, 365 days of inspiration, encouragement, and action steps to survive and thrive. And good Lord, in this time, don't we need to th survive and thrive? Oh my goodness. Yes, we do. Well, I'm really delighted that you're here so we can dive into your book. But before we do that, your devotional book, I want to just the viewers to get to know you a little bit more again. Tell us about your story. Tell us your testimony on how this all started. Yeah, so I was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer when I was 26, mm -hmm. and that was December 2003. So I'm coming up on 17 years. Congratulations. Cancer free, yeah, uh, pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, but I made some decisions that were, uh, let's just say, unique to a cancer patient. And that was after surgery, I decided not to have chemotherapy and I radically changed my life. I adopted a raw food diet. I started exercising. I addressed my emotional life, my spiritual life, my thoughts. And I just decided I was gonna do everything in my power to help myself heal. And I was trusting God to lead me in the process. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, your body's a temple. Yes. And we have a responsibility with the choices that we make each day and the choices we make can either lead us down the path of health or the path of disease. And unfortunately, a lot of us have not been taught this and we mm. have been conditioned to believe that uh, most disease is just bad luck, that mm. you're just a victim of chronic disease. But the truth is, and the science has shown for many decades, that chronic diseases like heart disease, diabetes, and cancer are caused by our diet and lifestyle choices. So that's actually good news because it means we can make changes now that can help us be healthy tomorrow. We are not victims. And right. We are actually have the power to change our habits, our eating habits. And that's, that's tremendous. I feel like there's a generation of us that, you know, we have gone through that fast food, easy, you know, we're, we're so busy. We don't have time to cook. We don't have time to help healthy cooking or activity. That is something f that's a luxury we don't have because we're busy, but wow, look at God, look what God did. Right. I mean, especially in the situations that we find ourselves now that we have more time uh, to do things. So that's really, really interesting. What I wanted to ask you is, you know, what are those, and I'm skipping a little bit, but what are those daily habits and that we can do that are small, but can really radically change your life and your health? Love talking about this. And that really is what the new book's about. Yeah. Um, Beat Cancer Daily. It's a devotional slash daily reader. And it's, it's scripture, it's inspiration, it's encouragement, it's practical steps that you can take to change your life. And so there's very simple things that you can do uh, on a daily basis that can produce big results over time. And you think about it, the past is gone. Can't change it. The future is out of your control. Mm -hmm. The only thing you have is right now. The mm -hmm. only thing you have is today. And so if you are willing to take care of yourself today, each day, you are sowing seeds of health and you'll reap a harvest. So some of those practical things are eating more fruits and vegetables, eating a plant-based diet. God made fruits and vegetables. They're good for us. We need to eat more. We need to eat about 10 servings a day. Mm. That sounds like a lot, yes. but it's actually not. A typical meal is three or four servings, right? So you have a big plate full of veggies, a big salad, oatmeal and fresh fruit for breakfast. It's very easy stuff. Um, another daily habit that's non-negotiable or should be 
is exercise. Yes, yes. These are simple things. They're not hard. And they seem, um, you know, we've heard them so many times that we just assume like, oh yeah, diet and exercise, well, you know, what's that gonna do for me? Everything. Yes. Right? That is the two most powerful things you can do for your physical body mm. are exercising in any way you enjoy at least roughly 30 minutes a day, mm. six days a week, and eating a plant-based diet. So those are, those are two big ones, but beyond the physical, really health and disease start up here. Mm. You, you can't win the, bottle, the, bat, <laughs> the battle in your body mm -hmm. until you win the battle in your mind. Mm -hmm. And that, that starts with making the decision to take care of yourself, just choosing to forgive people who've hurt you, choosing to practice gratitude, mm. right? When you are tempted to, be, to complain, right? Um, choosing to think and believe the best about people when you're tempted to be critical and judgmental, mm. right? Taking every thought captive, uh, not allowing yourself to get caught up in the envy and jealousy yes. that's so pervasive now with social media. Yes. So those are the kind of things that throughout this new book, I'm, I'm encouraging the reader to work on, to yes. improve, right? Yes, I love that. Now, you know, are those elements that you talked about, forgiveness, um, just a, a change of mindset, how did that impact? I mean, do you feel like it impacts the health of your body? And I don't wanna say, did it cause cancer? Because that's kind of, I, I don't know, I'm not a, uh, but does that feed it? And does it get you, a, just sicker because of that? I'll say it. Stress causes cancer. Wow. Stress, stress causes lots of chronic disease yeah. because when you are under stress, your body is pumping stress hormones, mm. adrenaline and cortisol. And these are destructive to your body. They're, they're very helpful if you're trying to outrun a tiger <laughs> or, right, or escape a fire <laughs> yeah. right, or get yeah. out of a burning building. Sure. Right? But when you are in a state of chronic stress day in, day out, your body becomes immunosuppressed mm. and pro-inflammatory. So inflammation becomes common. Mm -hmm. And the result of that is over time, your health degrades and you become susceptible to cancer, heart disease, diabetes, MS, lupus, autoimmune disease. All of these diseases are linked to chronic inflammation and immunosuppression. It also makes you more vulnerable to viruses and bacterial infections. Right. So all of that starts with stress. Well, what is stress? Stress is harboring unforgiveness. Mm. Stress is, comes from envy and jealousy. Stress comes from uh, complaining, right? Bitterness. It comes from fear, worry, and anxiety. And that is so pervasive right now in our society. And, uh, you know, God is so, and that God is, says, fear not so many times throughout his, the word of God, the Bible. And there's such a generation out there that really hasn't even opened up the word. So they, they don't know. And I feel that's why the, our calling to share our experiences, share our testimonies are, is just really tremendous, especially for a time such as this. So, I mean, with your calling, which I, I say, you know, your experiences, I mean, you're not a physician, you're not, you know, in the medical field, um, but you have actually lived it and you have seen how cancer can be beaten. Um, you, you are that living testimony. Um, so going back to that fear not, that anxiety, the action of gratitude, or how do you combat that? What do you do? Do you, do you, can you give me like a for instance? Yes, absolutely. Well, when I was, cancer taught me pretty much all the best, most valuable lessons I've ever learned in life. Yeah. I learned through the cancer journey. But the first thing was I learned how to give my fear to God mm. because every day it's creeping in. Right now in our world with COVID and all this stuff that's going on, I mean, there's so much fear. Yeah. And a lot of the fear is coming from the media or from our peers, people on social media. They're just promoting fear that are living in a state of fear. And so when you feel afraid, when you feel anxious, when you feel w worried, you have the power in that moment to stop yourself and to surrender that fear to God. And so that's what I had to do every day with cancer. Every time I, I would remember, oh yeah, I have cancer, I would say, okay, God, I trust you. I'm giving you my fear. I'm not gonna be afraid. Mm -hmm. I, I trust you. 
Just show me what I need to do. Show me what I need to change, right? But I'm trusting you to lead me. And that's not just a cancer prayer. Right, right. <laughs> right. It's like anytime you feel fear, you can stop in the middle and do this and just surrender your fear to God. Right. Lay it at the feet of Jesus. Right? That's what you do. Now, same thing with worries, same thing with anxiety. It's really the same process, right? And now the gratitude piece is, is a different uh, mental action. And so what I do and what I learned again in cancer was in any situation, there are always negatives and positives. Mm -hmm. And you have a choice. You can focus on one or the other. It's your choice. Right. We get conditioned to focus on the negative first. Usually right. the negative is really what gets our attention. Mm -hmm. right? That's why the news and the media sure. is always leads with the story of the murder. You know, right. They forget whatever. to tell that 99% of something is good, but they're really focusing on that 1% that will really drive their story. Yes. And so we all have challenges in life. We have difficulties. We have problems that come up. You can't avoid them. Mm -hmm. they're just, they just come up. And in the middle of that frustration or anger or fear or whatever it is, you can stop yourself and say, you know what? This isn't good. I don't like it, but I have a thousand things to be thankful for. Right. Let me just remind myself mm. what I have to be thankful mm -hmm. for. Well, when I had cancer, I had a wife who loved me. I had a home. I had a car, right? I had enough money to pay my next set of bills. Mm. I had a mom and dad who were there and loved me. I had a wonderful support system at church. I, I wasn't sick and dying in the hospital, right? I could actually feed myself and take care of myself. And, and as I just started to think about all the blessings I have, my attitude shifts in an instant. Yes. And, and any moment where I start to feel down on myself or get discouraged or in a funk, I can, I can think one thought and, and get out of it. And that one thought is, right now, there's someone dying in the hospital that would love to trade places with you. Mm. That's it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm yeah, good. Yeah. I'm great. Yes. I'm great. This is a minor problem, right? This is a very minor problem in, in the context of humanity. Yes. And so practicing gratitude is, again, it's something you, you have to practice. Yes. You have, you, it's a discipline. You have to catch your thoughts, take them captive, yes. and choose to think positively, choose to thank God for your blessings, to count your blessings. And it doesn't mean you pretend like some bad thing that doesn't exist or that it's not bad, but it means that you're trusting God that he's going to turn that bad, bad thing into something good. And, That's what he does. And I hear, so what I'm hearing is it's really the response. And of course, yes. it's the practice of that response. Talk to me about forgiveness. How does unforgiveness affect your immunity and your health? Well, bitterness is a toxic emotion. Mm. And when you are carrying bitterness, the longer you hold on to it, the more damage it does. And like I mentioned earlier with stress, negative emotions don't just stay in here, mm -hmm. right? They affect your physical body. And so carrying that bitterness will suppress your immune system, will make you prone to inflammation and chronic disease. And there's a, there's a way out. Right. There is a way out of the pain that, that someone has caused you in the past, and that is to forgive them let them go, give them to God, and just say, they're all yours. Mm. I forgive them. You can deal with them. I'm not going to hold on to the pain or the anger anymore. Mm. And God calls us. You know, he's the avenger. We're not. Um, he takes care of that. And in a society and the people that we are, we want to fix it. Yeah. You know, we're like, no, this person, I deserve better. I was overlooked. And let's say you're rightly so, you've been hurt and it was done in on purpose. That is the hardest thing to lay at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, I humble myself and I call you to be my God, my avenger, my victorious conqueror over this situation. And you start repeating these things, you can see that you start releasing that and you can move on. And I hear that with forgiveness. It's not about forgiving the person. It's about it really helps you the most. It helps you the most for sure. And look, it's easy, to, it's easy to forget that we need forgiveness too. Yes. And that's why Jesus said, if you don't forgive on earth, that's right. your heavenly father won't forgive you. Oh my goodness, Chris, that's really super scary. It right? is super scary because, you know, you are going to be judged and you, um, when you come face to face with him, you want to hear 
well done, my good and faithful son, right? But listen, we are going to go take a quick commercial break, uh, but we are going to be coming back with Chris. Hey, do you guys like this new configuration? We're trying to be socially distant, and um, I'm still trying to get used to it a little bit, but I kind of like it. Do you, Chris? I think it's, it's okay with it's, me. It's yeah, good. You don't feel too far away. <laughs> I know. We're still a little closer. <laughs> hey, listen, take a break, come back, and we're going to talk a little bit more with Chris, and we're going to dive into the devotional. You will not want to miss it. Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors. We're really having a wonderful discussion with Chris Wark about um, his testimony and how lifestyle um, is really important. The small habits that we're uh, forming are really important to our healing, uh, not only as he beat cancer, but also in our entire well-being in the situations that you may be suffering today, should it be anxiety, depression, fear. This is really a universal topic um, that Chris has brought to us. Thank you, Chris. Um, You're welcome. You know, and we were talking a lot uh, about filling the void um, in the commercial break. You know, there's a lot of voices out there, and I really feel God has just silenced them to say, listen, hear me, hear me first. Because um, with so many distractions, we were talking about media, how um, there's so many talking heads out there that are just filling your head with really whatever they think is important to them. Um, but God has really just shaken that up to say, hey, are you, we're going to stop with all that distraction so you can be still and know that I am God. And in your devotional book, you talk about that. It says day 56, if you don't mind. Um, I'm just going to say it starts here with be still and know that I am God. And then it starts. This verse comes with an assignment. So I really, I, I want to stop there. I mean, you go on. I mean, th these nuggets, Chris, I mean, you read it and you just have to simmer for a little while, um, which is really neat. So um, talk to us about the assignment of being still. Well, it's hard to hear from God if you're constantly distracted, right? If your mind is constantly occupied with media, social media, work, uh, and there's no time left, mm -hmm. right? If you're constantly busying your mind, you can't hear from God. And the act of being still, the act of prayer and meditation actually calms down your nervous system, mm. right? So not only do you get in touch with your creator and uh, let him minister to you and get peace and joy from that, but it also affects your physical body. Mm. And so a daily practice of prayer and meditation is incredibly powerful to calm your nervous system, reduce your stress, wow. and, and help just reset your perspective. Right? right. Just help you remind yourself, why am I here? What is my purpose in mm -hmm. life? You know, mm -hmm. what are my priorities? Because it's so easy, right, for your priorities to get complete, completely out of whack. Yes. You know, chasing after things that are, uh, you know, in the, in the grand perspective, pretty meaningless stuff. Oh, right, absolutely. Now, you were talking about the wilderness, um, and I wanted you to kind of expand on that and how, you know, that kind of uh, corresponds a little bit with what, what's happening in the world around us. Yeah, well, you know, the Israelites were rescued from slavery, mm -hmm. from the Egyptians, and God took them out of Egypt, and the plan was to go to the Promised Land, but they had to go through the wilderness to get there. And... The wilderness was a difficult place where that required that they trust God in a way that they never had before. And unfortunately, many of them grumbled and complained and said, we want to go back to Egypt, right? And they had bad attitudes and they were disobedient. Mm -hmm. And a journey that should have taken less than two weeks on foot took 40 years mm. because God let them wander around in circles. Uh, until the first generation died off. So they didn't even get to see the promised land because of their bad attitudes. Mm. And so that applies to us now. You know, the wilderness is a picture of a difficult season in life. Cancer was wilderness for me. 2020 has been a wilderness yes. for a lot of people, yes. right? I mean, with COVID and all the shutdowns Oof. and all the stuff that's happened. And it's so important that we respond to difficulty in the right way. Mm. And that's from a, a position of faith. Romans 8, 28 says, we know that God works all things for the good of those who love him. 
and are called according to his purpose. And so you have a choice in every difficult situation to choose to believe that God's going to work it for your good. Yes. You also have a choice to grumble and complain and have a bad attitude and say, why God, why me? You know, this stinks. And so cancer taught me to, to step out in faith and believe that God was going to work it for my good. And so that's a big message in the new book is that, you know, the wilderness has a purpose. It's to strengthen you. It's to teach you to trust God. And remember to believe that you're going through it, mm. right? Mm -hmm. He didn't bring you out there to die. Right. right. You're going through the wilderness. There's a better thing coming on the other side of it. Yes, you know, when you're talking about the wilderness, what was coming to my mind is John 16, 33, when Jesus said, you know, here in this earth, you're going to have trials. You're going to um, have so great sorrow. But the promise is there that Jesus has overcome the world. So, you know, if we can have that mentality and that mindset to say, my God, Jesus has overcome this world. He has overcome my situation right here, right now. So I will choose to forgive, even though I don't want to, and start practicing it or choose to not grumble, you know, because, wait, God has given me manna. Well, I don't want manna, but he's providing for you. So I just thinking at the silver lining, and a lot of people think that's positive thinking. Um, I mean, what do you say towards that versus that healing power of Jesus Christ? Well, it is positive thinking, you know? I mean, it's positive to, to believe that God is gonna work something for your good. And you should, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? You should exercise your faith and believe that he's gonna carry you through this difficult season to a better season, yeah. that he's gonna work everything for your good. You should choose to trust him and not grumble and complain. You should choose to practice gratitude and thank him for the good things, right? Mm -hmm. for, for the supply, the provision, the manna. Right. Thank him for those things instead of complaining about the things you don't have. Right. 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 So these are all positive things. Mm -hmm. And I, I wouldn't try to distill it down to saying this is just, oh, this is just positive thinking. Mm -hmm. right? It's so much more than that. Right. Right. It's, it's positive thinking and hope that's rooted in faith. Right. Right. In the belief that God loves us and is going to work things for our good, that works everything for our good, all yes. the bad things. For me, the cancer was a bad thing. Yes. And he worked it for my good and has blessed me in ways that I can't even, uh, could not have even imagined in 2000, you know, January 2004, <laughs> yeah. when I, you know, got home from surgery. Oh my goodness. Well, we've got about two minutes left before the next commercial break, but I want you to talk about subtraction before addition. What does that mean? Yeah. So there's a, there's a day in the book where I, I talk about this idea of subtraction versus addition. And a lot of times we think in order to make our life better, that we need to add more things mm -hmm, to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but the reality is when you try to add more to your life, it creates stress mm -hmm. and overwhelm. And so there's a different approach, which is what can I remove from my life that will make it better? It mm. will reduce my stress. Love that. And so that's, that's one daily challenge is what, what things in your life are crowding, right? Are, are making things crowded and complicated and heavy and overwhelming. What do you need to remove first? And subtraction actually makes room for addition. I love that. I love that because, you know, as a, young, a mom of a young child, you know, you hear around your circle of friends, you're busy, busy, you've got your child doing this, 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 and you're adding on. But really, are you walking in the calling of what the Lord has for yourself as well as for your child or the situation that you're in? And my husband always says, let's not add anything else. And I love that. Just that principle that you put on there. Uh, once you start subtracting, you really have more time to be still, mm -hmm. know that he is God, yeah. exercise, take care of yourself. Those are not, those are, those are not selfish things. You need self care to yes. be able to survive. That's right. If you're not a little bit selfish, taking care of yourself, right? you may not be around to take care of the people you love. That's right. Chris, it's been wonderful to have you and you're going to come back after this commercial break, but I want you to know that if you want to find out more about Chris, go to his website. It's chrisbeatcancer.com. So go check that out on this commercial break and then come back um, and we'll close up at that point. I love that.
Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors. And we have had a wonderful conversation with Chris Wark. Thank you for being with us, Chris. Thank you, Sandra. And I want you to know that you can find this book anywhere books are sold, um, or you can go to Chris's website, which we noted earlier. Listen, understand that God loves you dearly. He is using this time right now to get your attention. Try to fill the void with all things that are good, for He is a God that is for you and not against you. So know that here at Friends and Neighbors, we love you, but most importantly, Jesus loves you. And we look forward to seeing you next time on Friends and Neighbors.